taken over like the half the town being her old bad self. I mean her young bad self. Okay. <laughs> Love it. You're spying on I'm making now your own bad self. Yes. Yeah. What did we you answer your question at all? We didn't at all. I will give you a story. Yes, tell me a story. On my birthday, I had to fly back from LA to Vancouver and shoot Friday night into Saturday morning, got off work at 7.30 in the morning, Saturday morning, and then drove an hour back to Vancouver and then went to sleep. And that, those kinds of days on Vancouver have been, yeah. thought it all happen a lot. Just like to make you guys a lot. film at night. Like it'll be 6 a.m. Where do most of the scenes happen? Because you talk about like when you guys live here, you live downtown Vancouver, mm -hmm. but where is most of Riverdale filmed? Langley. 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 Oh, the township of Langley. Yeah. Like the, the storefronts are nice, but like all the other scenes, like why don't they do like an uh, indoor studio in like Burnaby or something? Can you come like, talk to our production manager, please? <laughs> that would be so great. The Langley's dude, anybody here from Langley? Langley. You're from Langley? Langley's have have you seen them filming? You're, wait, hang on. You by yourself are from Langley? <laughs> you just like, oh, you've been there before. You went to Langley <laughs> once. Ladies and gentlemen, He's somebody went to exciting. Langley. <laughs> there you go. Did you go to find them? <laughs> they were in Langley. <laughs> Where do you guys shoot in Langley off? Uh, there is like, I mean, <laughs> we're on one of the many hundreds Langley. of roads. <laughs> yeah, it's like literally like, like, like 200, 200 Street. Street. Okay. Yeah. 200 right. Street. Like a studio You'll never there? recognize yeah. it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. yeah, warehouses and stuff. Oh, yeah. right. But the 100 is yeah. shot there and Arrow and Flash. Yeah, and Supergirl. Super is, Super Super Girl. Girl. Super a lot of the CW stuff is out So is it kind of like how it would be like at uh, like a back lot in Los Angeles where there's like a cafeteria yeah. and all of you all hang out together? No cafeteria. Yeah. No. <laughs> no cafeteria. No. Train like tracks. There's, what did you just say? There's train tracks. Train tracks. Yes. Yeah. But then where do you guys have your meals? Just like in a tent with like tables? Yeah, cra yeah, like a... Everything is just like makeshift. Exactly. Oh, you're busting like the dream for us here. <laughs> There's no dream. No. <laughs> because in LA, if you're doing a lot, most yes. of the time you're like at Paramount or at Disney and there's a cafeteria or at Fox and there's there's all these built-in things and it's designed for a studio. Yeah. yeah. Because so many things film in Vancouver, all of Vancouver's been taken up. Yeah. So we had to go out to Langley and it's not really set up for that. But they have giant warehouses. And LA has got like decades of, of building things up, right? Building those buildings, making yeah. those fancy lots. Exactly. But uh, yeah, we've got something like 60 shows filming in Vancouver at the moment. Yes. Yeah. Um, Marisol, you come in and out from LA, but Natalie, you choose to keep your home yeah. most of the year on here in Vancouver. I was commuting from New Zealand yes. uh, for all of season one and season two, and it felt kind of inconvenient. She was a little tired. <laughs> And so we, we now just stay here. We stay in Vancouver. Yeah. And Marcel, how much time do you spend here in Vancouver out of the year? Um, off and on, we shoot for 10 months a year. Um, I probably fly home at least three times a month, something like that. Does your daughter live in LA or does she come she up comes here with your time? Me Every I go. time. How yeah, does she's work? a real good flyer. Uh, we have a, I have a home school. Oh. So it's literally at my house with like nine kids. Like it's a school at my home. And we what? have three teachers and it's a home school. And so when she travels with me, she Skypes into the homeschool, and then they teach her over the internet with Wait, the Wait, they have the class. school in your home when you're not there? Yep. Like in your home? In my home. Yeah. It's me and Marisol a bunch of actors. Marisol has an entourage. She is incredibly <laughs> organized. No, I just... I met Jeff backstage, me, no, part no, of your no, entourage. Let me, let me finish. It's a bunch of actors, yeah. and all of us have kids. Yes. And we were like, how do we do this? Because nothing shoots in LA anymore. So we all got together, and all of our kids were the same age, and let's form this school. And we've had it for about six years now, and there's nine kids and three teachers, and that's and we all know each other, and that's how we that's how we do it. Yep. What about your son? How do you educate him? <laughs> he educates himself on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, my son goes to a crazy school here, which is called a democratic school. And um, they basically, uh, they can, they, it's child-led learning, so the kids learn. Sorry, child what learning? Child-led. Ch the, the, child the children yeah. tell the teachers how to teach them? They, they show interest in what they want to do. And they that's what they love at yeah. school. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. they're pretty happy kids. They're it's a little true. wild. I don't think they want to get one <laughs> on their school life, though. Yeah, we want to talk about Riverdale. Is this interesting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got a lot about the personal life. Does anybody in the audience have a question right now for the ladies? Yeah, let's get on to what, what you want to yes. talk about. Perfect. She's leaving. 
Thank you for being so diligent and walking up to the microphone. What's your name? Victoria. 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 Where is your accent from, Victoria? The, the secret of Paris caused more, more problems in the next episode. Hey, yeah. Sorry, I don't speak English very well. You're doing, You're doing great. great. You're doing great. Say Sir? You're doing great. Can you say it again? Because I was distracted. The secret of parents caused more, more problems in the next episode. Yes. The secrets that the parents have continue to cause problems in the episodes to come. That's what you wanted to know? Yeah. Great. Um, they do because apparently we were really bad kids too. <laughs> Not just bad adults. And our past comes back to haunt us and we've set amazing examples for our kids. As you can see, they're well-rounded <laughs> kids. <laughs> they're trying to systematically eradicate their parents. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the parents are really incredibly twisted on this show. I don't know a show where all the parents are so completely mad. Be for yourself. <laughs> yes. How have you ladies really seen your amazing. role evolve from when season one, when they're like, hey, be in the show this way, this is what you signed up for for season one, yeah. and now, uh, as we're in the middle of season three, how has what you signed up for evolved, and how is that uh, uh, change as a, like, even as a professional experience for you? Great question. Um, I was nice in season yes, one. Yes, right? I was such a nice mom, I miss that. Um, <laughs> I thought she was a nice mom. I thought, like, I, for me, in season one, it was really important to have, a, you know, a really great relationship with my daughter. That was important for me as an actor to show other mothers and daughters out there. I felt like there was this thing that as soon as you become a teenager, you hate your parents. And I just didn't want that, right? Then, by the end of season one, my character completely flipped. And I was like, oh, apparently I'm not so nice. And I'm still, I think they are still trying to figure it out. Um, and I don't know. I think sometimes, sometimes I get to go back to the season one mom that I really loved. And other times it's been trying to catch up with the story and what she's had to do because of Hiram Lodge. Make sense? Okay. It's like the life of a regular mom. And did you, did you know you were going to own a brothel when you signed on for season one? Well, I, I jokingly suggested it since I didn't know what else Penelope Blossom would do since she was just a socialite and I had no income, uh, no career, no house. So I went, well, what else is she qualified really? to do? You're like the American dream. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> rose to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> very, very quickly. Um, yeah, but I mean, I think I think Penelope's uh, trajectory has been hilarious, and I'm thoroughly enjoying the Maple Club. How about you, people? <laughs> right. like, Who's caught up Maple to Club. every episode? Like, who is on? Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. yes. I, I would love to know from the audience. I don't know how we get them to answer. Maybe they have yeah. to go to the mic. Oh right, okay. Oh. What you would what you would like to see in season four, since we have a season four apparently. Yes, congratulations. Yeah, where do we go? We're, from we're, here? We're, we're, apparently. Yeah. We do. Apparently. No, no, we do. We do. It's confirmed. Yes. Uh, season four. Anybody has a? Uh, uh, you have a question, right? Yeah, but it be after. You tell us about this. Okay. Oh no, we're <laughs> they're about to reveal all the secrets. No, I know yeah, from the past. Know. No one wants to reveal what's coming on. They'll really? hint at it. Remember, Natalie, when you like, uh, were Daily Hive and you were like, something is going to happen, <laughs> something very big. Oh, but when yeah. anything's recording, I will not tell you. Camera turned off yeah. and she told us all this crazy shit. I was like, uh, <laughs> what show is this? And so they're not going to reveal anything until these mics are off. Maybe you can ask them when they're at the table I'm there ready. and you're not recording anything. They might give you secrets. Right now, they won't publicly. Right? My, right. right. I yes. was just asking for suggestions, what people think of happen, because oh. where do we go from here? Exactly. You know? They know. Yeah, yeah. So if you have uh, plot line ideas, we will uh, get uh, the, the writing you. staff to do that. <laughs> but you have a question, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, my name is Sagib. I just want to say I love the show. Thank you. It's one of my, one of my favorites. Um, my question is, do you guys have any like funny stories or any blooper type things that happened while on filming the show? Like, I had pneumonia season one. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. Wait, pneumonia? <laughs> that was hilarious. Well, how did you get pneumonia? <laughs> Just being outside all night? Um, uh, no, I, I was actually being joking, but no, I did. I had pneumonia for 
five episodes of season one. If you notice, like halfway through season one, I lost all this weight because I couldn't eat. Right. I was so sick and I couldn't get through my lines without coughing. Um, yeah, it was, that was fun. I thought it was hilarious. You're like, girl dying too that much. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious when we had to shut the whole show down with a force majeure, oh, which is yeah. like the one of the or the only reason you can you, actually shut a show do down. Do you remember when there was a giant stomach flu thing going through Vancouver? Yeah. Okay, so what Natalie is referring to is in one day we lost 120 crew members because everybody was throwing up. <laughs> it happened so quickly. Everyone was like, "I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not fine." When was this? Yeah, it was second season. Second, second, second season. season. It barely I think surprised. I had that. <laughs> we all did. It's your fault, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So that's what okay. we find hilarious is getting sick. Yeah. <laughs> or when the, when it doesn't snow in Vancouver ever and then it snows in Vancouver. Oh yeah, and we're all in summer clothes and it's just you know, just act like that's it's right. maple that's right. season. And driving <laughs> me and you driving to set. Wow, I've driven with Marisol. She is a crazy like she's like a Grand Prix driver because she apparently trained in Chicago where they do snow driving and she yeah, I've actually been skidding around corners with her. And like, I never got to an accident. No, you didn't. And I got you to work. Yep, yep, you did. I pushed you up a hill in my high heels. <laughs> Wait, don't you guys have drivers now ever since that thing happened with KJ? Because one of us almost died. Yeah. Yeah. Then we got drivers. Yeah, drivers. But the first season we did not have drivers. And, that's what you... and we all had our California cars out here. Yeah. And then the snow hit. And yeah. Vancouver's never heard of snow plows, apparently, no. or salt. Yeah. <laughs> and so we had to drive from Vancouver to Langley in like, you know, and that's what she's referring to, but now we get driven. Marisol is angry They've about noticed this. noticed how dangerous people we it's are. Okay, it's okay, you have drivers now, we're safe, the snow went away with the rain. Uh, you have a question, yes? Well, I actually have a story plot idea. Oh, good, oh, yes. okay, so just a uh, non-disclosure that any stories you share with us, they own the rights to Super C. <laughs> okay, so my name is Zafrin. Uh, I've been watching Hi. since the first season. And uh, earlier this season, you had the kids playing the earlier versions of the adults. So yeah. what about the adults playing later season versions of the kids? Ha <laughs> ha that's cool, I like it. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of, instead of going back to like the midnight club of the breakfast club, we flash forward to win the kids oh, so I are be their future older, selves. Yeah. Cheryl older. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. That's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, we own that now. Thank idea. you. <laughs> like perhaps on the Katie Keene spinoff, if that's that right. happens into yeah. a thing, because it takes place in the future. Yes. You guys can like do that. Absolutely. Get that written in your contract. Okay. There thank you. you. Thank, you. Your thank you for that. Thank you. They will send you a t-shirt. Maybe. Where would you go? Oh, you're over there. Okay. Uh, okay. No, I don't know if I'll send you a t-shirt. Uh, you over there? Yes. Wait. What is that? Is that Serpent a... t-shirt, right? Is that a rabbit? Is that a bunny or a flower? It's a fairy. A fairy. <laughs> like from Zelda. It looks like. Yes. That's also a serpent. A serpent shirt, right? No. This is actually. This is why I need glasses. Okay. Thank what, sorry, you. what is on your shirt? It's a, it's a couple of different fans. It's Universe, a human. Rick and Morty on there. There's a couple of things. <laughs> Your True Fan Expo experience. Thank You're having you. that right now. What is your question, sir? What's your name? Uh, my name is Jimmy. Jimmy, what's your question? Uh, my question is, is: Did you guys read the comics growing up, and like, oh, how do you uh, feel like yes. it compares to the, uh, mm -hmm. to the show? Yeah, I mean, I I was a huge fan of the comics growing up. Uh, I was in South Africa, and it was probably one of the very few comics we even got. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously, like a lot of you, I kind of went, "Wow, this is uh, not like the comics I knew growing up," which are very, you know, obviously we know they're all very sweet. But um, I think TV requires uh, a lot of like story and a lot of emotions and a lot of darkness, especially with what you're. Uh, teenagers are watching, right? I think at the same time we came out, it was 13 Reasons Why and Stranger Things, and you, you really need to dive into a uh, fast moving plot. So, yeah, it's quite a different Archie verse. <laughs> what about you? Did you grow up? Um, I, I, I just knew them from the Sunday papers, the funnies, and then Bazooka Joe had the, the little. Are you, you're from that era, right? You kind of know these things, right? Bazooka Joe. And they had the gum. They had Archie and, comics in there? And they had Archie comics. They would wrap the gum in these little comic papers. And so that's what I would read while I was trying to chomp through the very hard, really hard. but sugar-coated gum. And that was, that was all I knew. 
Okay. Yeah. It's, it's interesting you say the um, the era thing. So there was an episode, uh, I think in season two, where all the parents got together. Yep. And at the time, uh, there was new uh, Charles Melton had just joined as Reggie. Yep. And we saw Reggie's mom. And like, do they? They're not cast in the show right no, now. No, right? Charles always makes jokes about like mom. He has mom? No parents. Mom? But the woman who played uh, uh, Reggie's mom in that one episode yeah. uh, was Donna Suarez, and I went to university with her. Really? And I was like, oh my god, I'm that old. <laughs> but. Do you guys like look at that and be like, uh, we're not that old. How are we all these kids' parents? I felt really good about myself until I did the show. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now I feel yeah. like we're gonna have some twenty year olds. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> not just twenty year olds, it's like the hottest twenty year olds on the planet. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Right. What's the general <laughs> age of the, the, the teenagers on the show? Their twenties. They're in their twenties. Yeah, yeah, mid twenties. Mid twenties. Playing a decade younger. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's great. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, I feel good about myself. Hi, what is your question? Okay, uh, hi, my name is uh, Chase. I'm a really big fan of the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have uh, two questions. What was it like filming Riverdale in uh, the original pop diners they used for the first plot of the episode? What do you think about filming at that location? Did you guys film in the, um, because the, the, the diner in Langley is an actual diner. Yeah. And then once the show got picked up, I mm -hmm. feel like I'm telling you guys things about your show that you didn't know. Yeah. But it was like, they turned into a, uh, like a set. Yeah. So the first one, you yeah. can actually drive there and go there. You can see it in the video on Daily High. Uh -huh. <laughs> we went there. At dailyhive.com. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you can go there, but you guys didn't film you guys. I, I just didn't have scenes. I didn't have any scenes in Pop Steiner. No, no, we lived in the woods. <laughs> this, my, this little house. Yeah, my, my character didn't start working at Pops until like the third episode, and by that time we had rebuilt it on the yeah. lot at Langley's. So they didn't have that experience. I'm but sorry. you guys can have the experience and go there. What was your second question? What, what's it like filming in British Columbia with all the actors of Riverdale? What's your favorite moments of working in British Columbia. What do you guys like about BC? What do you like about, now we know you don't like the snow. You don't I like, like the snow You do like the snow. Listen, it's jeopardizing your life. Hold on. Okay, no, I'm, you're right. Hold I misinterpreted. On. Took your, con your I content like out of the context. I like the snow. I'm from Chicago. Oh. But when it snows, we have salt that melts the snow so that you can drive. Yeah. And so when it snowed, I, I, when I first got to Vancouver, they're like, it never snows. It never snows. <laughs> I cut to the most snow you've had in 90 years, right. and it never went away. That's it stayed, scary. yeah. So yeah. that's so that's what I was referring oh, to. Okay. Yeah. But Sorry, let I me now interested. let me now redeem my BC love. Yes, please. And answer your question. Okay, this is for real. I've been working for 20 years in the business, um, mainly in LA and other locations. But the BC people are the nicest people I've ever worked with. They're amazing, <laughs> truly, best crew, best people. I'm here with my daughter. I've never felt safer. I've never been able to walk down the street and have people smile at my kid and be happy that she's there. It's a lot different than LA in that way. Um, the food here, because I'm a foodie. What are your favorite food? restaurants? Oh, I have a lot of them. Yeah. Um, I like Miku, I like Salvia Volpe, I like Italian Kitchen. I like, I mean, a lot of places. Yeah, you go to like all the different neighborhoods Yeah, too. oh yeah, yeah. Kids, I, there's a bunch of places in Kids that I really like. Yeah, yeah. which one? Oh, and what's the, what's the pizza place that's, um, the one that's on Victoria, you know, has a little Cinquecento uh, Italian car on the outside of it. It's the best pizza like in the world. your commercial drive? Mm, yes, I yes, Italian. Does anybody know? You must know it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it before the end of this thing. Okay. It's amazing, it's so good. It's like one of the best pizzas. What's it? Taverna, no, no, what? La Taverna. Something like, something like that. Anyway, it's on Victoria. It's a dive. It's the best pizza ever. Um, but, sorry, I'm hogging up the whole entire thing. But I, I really love filming here. I love living here. I've considered, like, getting citizenship, she knows, because I've been asking her about it. I really, really like it. Are you a citizenship? Yeah, I just got Wait, did you get citizenship, citizenship this morning when they did the cosplay citizenship? Because <laughs> uh, that would have been amazing. Yeah, I heard it was amazing. You're like, I'm playing Penelope Blossom, <laughs> like, wow, she looks just like her. Yeah, yeah, no, um, I got permanent residency at the beginning of this year. I, that's oh, how I was to be. Yeah. 
I, I just loved it from the moment I got here and uh, I remember running through, jogging through Stanley Park and bursting into tears and just going, I'm not going back to New Zealand. <laughs> as much as people think it's the same, it just, you know, this feels like it's the best of all worlds. It's uh, happening, it's beautiful, it's kind of balanced in all the ways you just mentioned. Um, Coming, being born in South Africa in one of the most dangerous cities in the world, it was great. It's great to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can go snowboarding, you know, well, uh, and a million other things, music, etc. Glad to have you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Zane. And Zane, yeah. it was really Zane that introduced me to Vancouver. So thank you, Zane. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it was really interesting when I first met Natalie, um, we were, what was the award show we were at? Some kind of... Uh, was it the Leo's? No, that was before, it was before no, that. No, it was the oh, Actro. Yeah, it was the UBCP it was awards like, at the UBCP Union. UBCP is like the yeah. Union for Actors. Yeah, and I just saw her, because we were doing a show on Daily Hive called Riverdale Rewind, and I saw her, I went up to her, I'm like, Natalie! And she just looked at me, because I forgot, you know when you watch shows, you think you know them, but they don't know you. So she's like, hello. No, and no, then, I went, mean, oh! Yeah, and we just started chatting and then she came. Fun. And one thing I'll say is we did a fantastic interview where she talks about her career. And if any of you are aspiring artists, she gave some great advice of why it's important to create your own work. So go check that out. Because dailyhive.com. At dailyhive.com. It's on our YouTube channel. But like honestly, it's like Marisol, you need to come in, we can do this, a similar thing. But Natalie just was so uh, it's like create your own work. Don't sit around, wait for the opportunity. And you were just like very generous in what you had to say. And you can do a lot of that here, you know. Um, Vancouver is a great city for that. There's so many talented people from, you know, it's just full of people making film and TV and they will help we you have with your project. The audience making a film in a week. Oh yeah, where? Raise your hands. Right there, those guys. They're making a film. They're making their own film. Yeah. How did you know that? They came and told you yeah. that? Because they came and told you that. That's amazing. Them. Because I, I just, I can tell. They asked, did they ask you to be in the project? <laughs> oh, that, that was a missed opportunity, gentlemen. Just right here. Uh, what is your question? Hi, so my name is MJ. I Hi, love MJ. both of your characters very much. I love to hate them here. Like, <laughs> That's what we're here for. Um, I have two things. I do have a plot idea for you guys. Uh -huh. um, and uh, first, I have a, a question: Is uh, what is your favorite moment behind the scenes? Um, like, what was something you really liked that happened, or something like that? And then my plot idea is, you're kind of doing this already in Riverdale, but it's uh, adapting more of Archie's weird mysteries, because that was like the best show and the best comic line where all this crazy mysterious things happen in Riverdale and Archie and the gang have to go back and they have to figure out what's going on and they have to combat everything and everything ends up fine, they're always at pops in the end. And yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> Archie's Weird Mysteries. Even Afterlife with Archie is kind of somewhere that, I think Sabrina has come in and kind of stole some of the, the darkness there, so have you guys yeah, felt yeah. that like you wanted uh, the, Roberto, the showrunner, uh, has he felt that like we're gonna take Riverdale in a different direction because now that dark side uh, is being addressed with Serena. I think they, they're very much in the, in the land of, of magic and the supernatural and I don't think uh, Riverdale's ever going to go that way. So we're more in our, our world of, of solving mysteries and they're more in their world of, of magic. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, it's a good it's a good place for them both to be. Do you think there'll ever be a crossover? Have you guys ever talked about oh that? Oh my god, there has to be. Well, because you guys are on the CW, they're on, well, yes, in Canada, I don't know if it's in the States, you guys are on Netflix here, too. Yeah, but it's the yeah. same, it's the same we crew, same other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, there's def sorry, oh, okay. there was definitely, like, a, a funeral scene in uh, Sabrina where they go, well, you wouldn't have a turn off like this in Riverdale. So we definitely started, like, hinting at it, yeah. yeah. Her question about, oh, sorry. I want at least, like, a Halloween episode. Yes. Or something, and I keep pitching the lodges as vampires. Oh, my God! <laughs> Right? Yes. 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 Yeah. Tell, tell them your vampire yeah. theory. Tell them your vampire theory. My vampire theory? Yeah. What's my vampire theory? You said that when, uh, so there was an opportunity when uh, Riverdale launched. They did a thing on Granville Street at one of the diners, and they had all these fans come out. And Marisol was the person oh, yeah. who came and like said hello to everybody. I did. And you told us uh, that you had a theory that the lodges were actually vampires. I did, and I do. Because do you remember? Like with the lodges, like it's never daylight in the lodges. <laughs> it's always yeah. dark. 
They're always living by candlelight yeah. and fires. And really, you rarely ever see a spotlight wearing black. Don't you think? I don't really remember. We're going to get to your question about the behind the scenes, but Sorry. don't we? Know, I don't really remember Penelope Blossom from the comics, but Hermione Lodge, and I didn't even know when I was a kid. I thought it was like Hermione. I didn't know how to pronounce <laughs> yeah, it. Because when you I read it, was, yeah, and I, I thought, thought it was, Reggie was Reggie because like I, I didn't know how to say that word. <laughs> So anyways, Hermione, when she was this old white lady, so when she you was. got that part, were you like, oh, uh, well, I really, I was like, what? Perceived. what, you're not going to make me, I mean, you're not going to, yeah, don't, you know, yeah. yeah, I didn't even know she was in the comics, oh, you yeah. didn't, I didn't know, and then, and then when I got it, and like the trades came out, and it was like a picture of this cartoon lady with white hair, and then me on the other side, I was like, oh god, what's going to happen now, so then did you think yeah. that Hiram was going to be played by an old, they were man? making jokes, like, like, <laughs> Luke um, was making jokes that they were going to get like Louise Guzman, if you know who that is. <laughs> and, like, and they were, I was like, please stop, stop, stop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to answer your question about behind the scenes, behind is there the a scenes. moment over the years that perhaps you're like, hey, I really fondly remember that, like with the cast or with the crew, you talk about how much you admire the BC crew. Is there something that stands out to you and you're like, you know what, this is a family. I really am grateful that I'm a part of this, not just because it's a cool show and a cool job, but it's a good community to be a part of. Um, for me, it was it was the read. Where's the girl who asked the question? There she is. Um, for me, it was is whenever you do a pilot. I've done a lot of pilots. You never know how they're going to go and if they're going to get picked up and and then how are they going to be. And you're always hoping for the best. And what you do is you do this read through with the whole cast where everyone reads their parts. And I remember being flown out to Vancouver and out to Langley and sitting in this room, like right outside a wardrobe. And everyone was reading. It was the first time you got to hear like Cammie read Veronica and Cole read Jughead and KJ play Archie. And none of us knew each other. And when we heard and read the script out loud for the first time and heard mm -hmm. everyone's voices, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, damn, mm -hmm. you know, it's real. This could be really good. Mm -hmm. So probably then. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, I have a memory like that at that same first table read, um, and then Luke, um, who we love and who's going to be, it's going to be good. Hey, uh, Lorna, just since yeah. you, can we just say something? Uh, obviously, you've heard of the news uh, about Luke Perry. Uh, Marisol just wants to address that right now. Yeah, so I just want to say that um, we know nothing. We know nothing right now. We don't know anything. Um, we just know his family has reached out and asked all of us to not say anything and to not answer questions. Just respect their privacy at this time. So on social media, you know, there's been noise on it and stuff. And so I just want you guys to know that Luke himself is not on social media, if you know Luke. And so out of respect for him and all of that, we're obviously obviously praying for him and care so much but we're just kind of putting a pause on everything when it comes to him but thank you for anyone and everyone who's had him in their prayers and thinking about him we all are yeah 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 and i mean i was actually just going to share a fun story about luke because uh because of luke and at that first table read, he came up to me and, you know, he's going around the room being himself, going, hi, I'm Luke, how are you? And being super friendly. And he shook my hand and he went, hi, I'm Luke. And I went, I know you, Luke. We've met before. And I knew him from Cape Town uh, in South Africa where we were both working on, um, I was working on the Poseidon Adventure. And there was an after party and he dropped out of the sky and landed on the, the front of my car like Spider-Man. He literally like dropped down into like a <laughs> surf pose and dented my renter car. And I was like, I don't know who this guy is. He's just dented my car. And so I hooted at him to get off. <laughs> and, and he kind of checked me out and, and jumped down and scuttled off like Spider-Man. And so... How did he drop out of the sky? I think he jumped off a balcony. Like, like a, not a very high one. Wait, but he, hang on, not as a stunt? Just no, like he no, did he it? Was, he was having a fun night. And I was late. And he just jumped off a balcony onto my car. And, uh, and so when he was like, came up to me at the reach, I was like, do you remember Cape Town? And that was how we have always been friends. Yeah. That was an unexpected story. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Unexpected things happen to me all the time. Yes. Right? <laughs> How often do you guys uh, hang out outside of filming? Because you spend so many hours together. Not on enough. Set. But yeah. what's like, what's well, I mean, like, you know, I think the, 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 the core uh, actors are on set so much, they actually don't even have much spare time, right? And then the rest, uh, a lot of the actors go back to LA the moment they're finished because they've got families. But there are moments that we do get up, get to hang out. Um, make the whole hot chocolate Yes, sure. yes, don't get in the way of this woman in a good hot chocolate festival. <laughs> you yes. are like the foodie. We all I, need to like yeah. know Thank everything. You. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. think by looking at her, but she is <laughs> she is food food crazy. Because Vancouver has this thing in January. January is like the most boring month. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Nothing happens yeah. in January. Yeah. So Vancouver has this giant hot chocolate like tour. And so, the festival. I swear to God, so I'm sitting there like on the internet trying to entertain my kid going, what are we going to do? And I'm like, Rain, because her name is Rain. I'm like, they have a tour with hot chocolate, with cafes all over the city. We're going. And so I called up Natalie and she bought her son. And then we all went, we go to all these places and you can sample the hot chocolates. It's fantastic. We are going to give you a side gig as like a reporter because like... <laughs> She knows like all the places to go. You have a question. You look like you have a bigger clipboard than me for your questions. Yeah, um, I volunteer here, so. Oh. <laughs> it's just the five minute warning. So. Oh, I see. Um, no. Anyways, my question is on the topic of food. Um, I was actually on Riverdale once. Ooh. And, um, I was a background actor and it was my first gig ever, but I had always, uh, people had always told me that Riverdale has one of the best crafties in all of Vancouver. <laughs> so on the topic of food, I just wanted to ask in terms of your vast, you know, big careers, which one would you say had the best crafty? Yeah, I'd agree with that. <laughs> and we have a lot of vegans and there's a great vegan selection. Yeah. No? <laughs> Yeah, well, oh she's, no, she's you... a tough, tough one. But, okay, just hold on. <laughs> hold on. You, you understand that she's a food foodie sophisticate, okay? So just... she's about to talk about things next level just... that us mere mortals don't understand. <laughs> so yes, please. Proceed. Okay. I did it. My first movie ever was with Wallace Shawn, by the way. Who's oh, here. did you see him? I did. Oh, I was like, do you remember me? I was like, he's like no. Years ago. What did he say? He's like, no, but I. <laughs> <laughs> but I did a movie called Vegas Vacation. Yes. And we, it was with Jerry Weintraub. So Jerry Weintraub is the producer of Ocean's Eleven, Ocean's Eight, all those guys. He was Frank Sinatra's manager. That's this guy. So Jerry Weintraub produced it. So we went to Vegas to shoot it and shut down Vegas, right? So we had Jerry, we had Chevy Chase, we had Randy Quaid, we had... We had some big names in Jerry Weintraub. Because of that, where's the cater, where's the crafty girl question? Because of that, we had really, really, really great craft service. That was the best craft service. I'm sorry. But it was Vegas, and everything is better in Vegas. Don't, 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 don't. Yeah, Thank you for some support. It's okay, it's okay. Um, but Wallace Shawn didn't remember me. No. And I made him, I, and I made him, this was my first movie ever, and I made, I walked up to him, I was like, oh, can you say Inconceivable? <laughs> Please like, say it. You know, he said it. He's like, like oh, you need you. to purchase an autograph photo from a young lady. <laughs> uh, nice you know what, I, I brought these beverages here and I didn't even offer you one. Did you want one? Because I want to play a game with you. I'm going to wait for later. Why? What kind of game? Well, it's, uh, well, you know, obviously it's, uh, I just, yes, no, no, we're good. Yes, no? No. Okay. So, um, obviously in a yearbook, there's always the most likely to. So I wanted to do a rapid fire thing where <laughs> I give you the most likely to. You tell me who from the cast is most likely to be Ooh. that category, yes? Okay, category or person, or uh, character or person, or yeah. does it matter? Person. Person. Do we want to know the character or the person? Person. They want to know the okay. person, okay? Right. So I'm going to read it, and you guys tell me the first person that comes to mind that you think fits this, okay? okay. So out of the cast, of Riverdale, who gives people terrible nicknames? Luke. Yeah? I don't know. <laughs> what was Luke's nickname for you? Well, it's not really one of Luke's nicknames, but Luke is the guy who does... He does it. Yeah. What do you okay. Oh. Nickname. Maybe people are too scared to give me a nickname. I'm too weird. <laughs> Perhaps this could apply more so to a character than the actor, but who would be more likely to hook up with a mom or a dad from the show? 
<laughs> Let's go character on that one. I think you'd have to address that to the Reggie. children. <laughs> what? Reggie. Yeah, right? <laughs> Charles probably too. True, that is true. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Who would most likely find a reason to take their shirt off? <laughs> KJ. KJ. And Charles. And, and Charles. Yeah. But KJ like calls up and asks Roberto, he's like, do I really need my shirt for this? <laughs> it does. Really? Yes. I did not know that either. Yeah. <laughs> How about this? Now oh, this is gonna be interesting. Who spends hours deciding where to get food? Oh gee, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> she actually Maybe. brings people uh -oh. to sit. But I but I give good food. No, right? you, you got some good recommendations. I'm hungry now. Uh, this one can be uh, the character or the actual actor, but props character. Who is going straight to hell? Mark. <laughs> you mean hiring? No, we were talking about people, not characters. Uh oh. Do you have a story? Why do you think Mark's going straight to hell? Uh, just because he's so sweet. <laughs> he's got to be hiding something. I don't buy that, but okay. No, no, no. I think he's just got that that um, Cheshire Cat smile. You know, that just jumps to mind. I mean, of course I'm going straight to hell, but no one was going to say it. Bad girl, <laughs> bad girl alert, bad girl alert. Now, How about this one? Hang on, did we say people or characters? And like the person? Either. We're saying people. When, when, it, when people. it gets too dangerous, I give you the character option. Okay, right? Okay. But here's this but one. Let's go with the people. This is the people. <laughs> the actual actors on the show. Who would be super uncomfortable in a strip club? No one. <laughs> no one. Oh, which character would be super... Yeah, who, which person from the cast would be... Probably me, to be honest. Yeah? yeah. Why? It's a very serious answer and not funny, but I'll answer it. Sure. I have a non-profit for human trafficking. Um, I run it, I'm the CEO of it, and I do lots of work with the, the United States and abroad on that subject. So, uh, with strip clubs, there are a lot of girls there that are not there voluntarily. And I have a hard time sitting back and not doing something. Marisol does amazing work. That's right. Amazing work. Yeah. You know, this goes to a different question. We'll come back to this. But uh, why is it important for you to use your platform and also for you as well? Because I know you do this too, uh, both of you. Why is it important for you to use your platform to make a profound difference in the lives of others and in the community abroad? Um, for me, there, at least with trafficking, I just, I couldn't sleep. You tell me about kids being taken and, and sold in brothels around the world, I can't sleep. It's not going to happen. So, uh, and I've been working in the field of human, human rights for a long time. Because I'm on a show that people watch, it opens doors. When I was on 24, I could get into any office I wanted to in DC. Because they all watched 24. So, if I'm going to have that kind of doors opening or people wanting to meet or people wanting to listen i better do something with it because i'm the one who has to put my head on my pillow at night that's my kid who has to grow up in this world um and other people's kids and so it just kind of goes it, it's i cared about this anyway regardless of whether i was an actress or not it just helps me meet with more people and be able to do more because of the doors that are open, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I agree that you've done amazing, amazing stuff. You know, I think just to, just to, to start with, you know, when we were uh, 20 something actors, it's so important to be famous, you know, like you just really want that, uh, that yes. kind of, the show will be closing in half an hour. Yeah, you better come and visit us before it closes, yeah? We're going to be uh, signing some more pictures before it closes, yeah. Um, but yeah, and I, I don't know about you, but once I had, had experience that, like, I'm on TV, I'm, I, I'm recognized, I've, I've, uh, I'm doing a, a show that, and a role that I enjoy, at some point I kind of went, but what does it all mean? And I needed something else. Like, well, what am I doing with this? When people come and talk to me all the time, like, what, what else do I tell them? about the world that I want to say. And so I started working in environmental and conservation uh, work because I'm very passionate about keeping our planet alive. Um, and so, so when Riverdale happened, I was very, very aware, same thing, I couldn't sleep because of what was happening with uh, the palm oil crisis where rainforests all around the world are being uh, cut down for palm oil, which is just like a cheap snack food oil. And um, 
Riverdale has the perfect audience. It's young people who are going to inherit this world and they're the ones who are going to be making, they're the big, they, they make the choices, right? They're the consumers. And so for me, I was like, hey, all of this stuff you want to know about Riverdale, here it is. Whatever you want to know about me, here's some of it. And then here's something that you might not have thought about. Uh, and I've had such a brilliant response from people going, I did not know this. Like with you, I did not know this. Yeah, and that's why we thought you might want to give it a think because there are, you know, we give you all the escapism of watching this wonderful entertainment and here's a little bit of the real world that you can make a difference to. And that for me is kind of satisfying life, a satisfying life. You know, one thing I'll say is that from your Instagram stories, you've influenced my purchasing choices. Like, you know, like when I'm in the grocery store, I'm like, I'm not going to buy that candy because of palm oil. It's something I never thought of before. So I uh, can acknowledge, I can attest so that when you guys do stuff like that, people are paying attention. Uh, I want to end this uh, with uh, one last question. We're here at Fan Expo Vancouver. Why uh, is it important? And uh, how do you guys feel about the opportunity to connect with fans? Like, like you said, you're going to be back at the table there, uh, meeting people, doing autographs and whatnot. Uh, uh, to take this opportunity, take this time, why, why is that a good experience for you guys? Well, we wouldn't be anything without the fans, right? You, we exist because you exist. Um, I, I love it because when, we, when I started out in this business a long time ago, there was no social media, there was no nothing. And so you would do a project and then you'd wait six months to a year for it to even come out. And then you never got to hear if anyone even liked it except for the ratings, which was just a number. It wasn't an actual face. And so the one thing I do like about social media is I get to hear immediately. I'm like, oh, how did that scene go? How did, oh, they liked it, yay, yay, yay. Um, and so I like to read the comments and I like to meet people because it makes me feel like what I'm doing, it's landed somewhere. You know, someone receives it on the other end and really liked it because that's, otherwise I'd be at home doing the stuff with my mirror, you know? Yes. And you're also <laughs> really good about like connecting with people on Twitter. Thanks, I see thanks, that you do I like that. it. Um, I have one last question, the last one, and let's make it about the actor. Um, you two ladies are hot mamas on Riverdale, but out of the cast, the youngins, who will make a great cougar? Oh, Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say the same. Right? Yeah, yeah. Madeline, and Madeline. speaking of that, on Sunday, Madeline and Vanessa Morgan will be here on this stage, and these ladies are gonna be at their table right now for the next 30 minutes before the show closes, and here again all day Sunday. What times are you guys here? Do you know? I think morning. it's 10. Is morning? It? Yeah. Oh, are you here the whole day? Yeah, I'm here the whole okay. day. Yeah. Perfect. So you have a lot of opportunities to come ask some more questions, hang out with them, meet with them. I hope this opportunity, uh, this gave you the opportunity to understand them more and see a little insight into them. Thank you. Thank you very much Thanks, for taking guys. time to chat with them. Uh, Natalie Paul and Marisol Nichols from Riverdale. They will be over there at their table.